Hey guys, and CSFan001 here, welcoming you to another one of those weekly trophy list update videos. Today's date is Monday, October 7th, 2019. So, uh, this will have covered the week of September 30th through October 6th of 2019. It has been a pretty busy week, not as much in the world of trophies, but definitely a busy week overall. So, first and foremost, I don't know if I mentioned this during the last one of these updates, but Destiny 2 just had its latest DLC release, the Shadow Keep update. As far as I know, it's considered to be smaller than the Forsaken update overall, but interestingly enough, it does not come with trophies, so... In some ways, that is a very good sign for the future, because that may mean that... I know that they've said that they want Destiny 2 to have, like, another, like, four to five year plan or something to where it would keep on going, but if this is anything to go off of, we may never have to deal with DLC trophies in Destiny 2 again, which would be awesome, because that would just leave me with the Forsaken DLC trophies. Now, I've talked about these before, just Forsaken Nightfall boss, that's not hard, I need to stop being lazy. The Last Wish Raid, I've heard, is not too bad. Again, stop being lazy, get a team that carries me through it, done and done. Collections Badge, making progress on. Didn't get any exotics this week, but I only need two more to finish one of the Collections Badges. I need one piece of clothing for a Warlock, and I need the last weapon from the Red War. And that will finish off the Collections Badge. So that will be done eventually. Again, same thing as always, but I just need to stop being lazy about the other trophies. I just can't believe they didn't actually give us DLC trophies with Shadowkeep, and that's kind of awesome, because that means no worrying about wasting another 40 bucks on another expansion that for a game that I don't really find to be all that fun or care as much about. Uh, the Triumph Seal is still pretty brutal, but that's the last thing I would ever focus on. And isn't it... Yeah, it's only a bronze. Like, why? That's just dumb. Okay, but anyway, for the games I actually played this week, of course, I finished up Borderlands 3 last week. Uh, I got two Platinums this week. I got the PS4 and PS Vita versions of Access Denied. This is a Rattalaka puzzle game. As with most of them, it has six different versions. It is a very, very easy Platinum trophy. It takes less than an hour, as long as you're following a guide. So this version, uh, the PS4 version, took me 46 minutes, I think that is. No, wait a second. Uh, that is 44 minutes. Yep, 44 minutes. Okay, so that one took me 44 minutes. This version took me, it looks like, less than 40 minutes. So that's actually a little bit surprising that it took me less than that. Uh, but actually, let's just go back into this one to talk about it. So this is a very, very easy Platinum Trophy as long as you follow a guide. Uh, you'll get these two trophies, this trophy, this trophy, this trophy, this trophy and these two trophies, all simply for completing the game. There are a total of 36 puzzles in the game that you have to solve. Some of them are very, very easy. Some of them, I'm not really sure how they expect you to figure them out without a guide, but as long as you are following a guide, you will have no problem whatsoever obtaining this Platinum. Nothing difficult about it, not even time-consuming, like I said. Uh, you'll have to skip a level, which you'll want to do once you've already completed the game. Just go back and skip any level. It takes a couple minutes for the little meter thing to fill up to allow you to skip, but obviously very, very easy. Uh, then you have to spend at least three minutes on one level. You may get this one through natural progression, either on the level with the panels, the switches, which is this trophy. Have to get it on that level, possibly, because that's kind of a longer level. Another opportunity is not long after that. There's a level where you have to solve two of the mazes, and for each one you have to set up a different set of circuits. So that one's kind of a longer level, and that one might be good for this one as well. Uh, toggle the switches a hundred times. That's very, very easy. Just keep on flipping the switches over and over again on that level with the panels, and you'll get it no problem. You'll probably get it naturally because you probably won't be able to get it in just a hundred clicks because it's all matching and it's all randomized every time. Play a previously completed level. The first couple levels are super, super easy, so you can just do it on those. Make a short circuit. This one is a little more uh, misleading, not really misleading, but just a little bit trickier to get because you have to connect the different colored circuits on one of the levels where you make circuits. As long as you're following a guide, again, this shouldn't be a problem, but just do keep that one in mind. That's sort of a little extra thing that's a little bit more out there. But yeah, I did both of these Platinums. I'm going to be doing, in the future, whenever I do 
the same game in two back-to-back -back videos or like two back-to-back -back platinum. So like what I did with Access Deny where it was a number 402 and number 403. I'm just gonna make a single video, like a single slightly longer video of the two Platinums at once, because I just think that kind of makes a little bit more sense, you know? Just makes it seem like, I mean, I don't know why people would want to watch the same Platinum get unlocked multiple times, like over multiple straight weeks, just see it keep unlocking for each video for like two to three weeks. I don't think that's as interesting, so... I'm gonna start with a lot of these games combining the Platinums into a single video. It's like what I wanna do for 393 through 398, or no, 394 through 399. Uh, that's one that I wanna possibly combine a bunch on because it was the same three games, just slightly different orders. So that's sort of what to expect for some of these future ones. This is gonna be a couple months down the line though because I'm still in the 380s right now posting. So then we have Near Automata. This is the main Platinum I am currently working on. Uh, I gotta say, this is actually a pretty good game. Like, I am very pleasantly surprised. I'm having fun playing this one. Like, the dialogue and characters are interesting enough. The setting and the world building, the lore is interesting to me. The music is fantastic. The combat works pretty well for the most part. I'm not a fan of the way the camera works and it's constantly changing around. I'm not a huge fan of that, but for the most part, I'm, I'm liking the game a lot. It's actually a pretty fun game. So, for the trophies, so far I've completed a bunch of story-related trophies. These three are also, or no, these two are going to be unlocked while completing the story, and then this is an ending-based trophy for achieving the first ending in the game. Then you have to complete the game a second time, but it's not really truly completing the game a second time. It just switches you over to another character and you sort of play the story from a different perspective. So it's still part of the whole story, but it's an interesting concept and that's gonna get you another ending. Uh, well, that that's probably spoilers, but these are all, I think, story-related trophies. Actually are, yeah, a lot of these trophies are story-related. And then view the final credits, which you get after completing the game the third time, which is the C ending. So you achieve all the different endings and you'll get, you get, you achieve endings A, B, and C and you should get this trophy shortly after for viewing the credits. That's from what I've read. Uh, then we have a miscellaneous trophy here, the Sarga miscellaneous trophies. You have to collect, have your body collected by yourself or I guess you could get it collected by someone else online. Interesting little thing about this game, it's sort of uh, like, like in a Soulsborne game where you die and you have to go back over to your body and collect the resources from it before dying again or else it all disappears forever. And if you're connected to the online, you can collect other players' past bodies if you wish. And it will give you extra resources, which is actually pretty useful. So I would highly recommend that you don't have to be online, but it definitely makes this one particular trophy a lot easier to be online so that you can harvest other bodies. Uh, you have to complete 80% of quests. I believe this is referring to side quests specifically. So I've completed at least one, obviously, is pretty much unmissable. You have to find 80% of the archives, 80% of unit data, 80% of the plug-in chips, all the pod programs, so these are upgrades for your mech suit, your pod, whatever you want to call it. These are upgrades for yourself, pretty much. And then unit data is earned by fighting enemies. Archives are some kind of collectible item. I'm not entirely sure what that requires. You have to upgrade any weapon to its highest level, which is four. You can purchase upgrades up to three pretty easily from vendors, but level four requires certain characters. And you have to do it for all of them. You have to fully upgrade all the pods. And then you have a bunch of hidden trophies here. I'm not, let's see, what are these? Your first hacking game. I'm not really sure what that is, but I know that that means, you know, I'm actually surprised because I thought that I did that already in the game. That's kind of weird because I thought that was like a story related thing. So these all have to do with hacking. This must be in other playthroughs though, more specifically. Uh, this one's pretty much unmissable. Uh, this one, I don't know exactly what that one is, but it's probably not too hard. This one's another collectible trophy. This one is probably going to come pretty naturally. Uh, this one requires you to tame an animal and then ride it, but it's not too hard. Uh, catch 20 different kinds of fish, again, collectible type. Then these are presumably other semi-story type trophies. 
That's my assumption with these is they have something to do with the story. You do have to achieve all endings of which there are 26 and that's a bronze for some reason. That's kind of weird. Uh, so yeah, there's 26 different endings in the game and there's like five main endings and then a whole bunch of just bonus extra Silent Hill-esque bonus endings. <laughs> But here's the thing about this game and what it's most famously known for. There is a trophy shop in this game, which allows you to purchase all non-story related trophies through the shop, which is pretty awesome to say the least. So that is actually really, really cool that they allow you to go in and do that. Now, I have certain thoughts on that, and I'll probably talk about it more once I finish the game. But let's see these... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So those story-related trophies, those like 19-ish, are all going to have to be unlocked yourself. You're going to have to do all those on your own. And I think there's maybe a couple others you're going to have to do on your own, but most of the trophies can be purchased at the trophy store, which is pretty awesome because that means that you don't have to bother with some of the more time-consuming aspects. And I think that if you're going to be a game that does that, this game does it better than some out there might, just because you have to still complete everything in the main story. You don't get to skip any of that. You just get to speed up all the annoying extra stuff, or possibly annoying extra stuff, because there's a lot of quests in the game. There's a lot of collectibles. The world's pretty big. There's quite a few things you have to do to get all these other trophies. And they just end up being really time-consuming and grindy, and it's just not really, you know, that's just not as fun, you know. Why would you, uh, most players aren't going to really want to do that, so the trophy shop gives you another option. Uh, otherwise, there are a couple of missable trophies in this game, apparently. I'm not sure exactly which ones, but there are maybe two miss. No, I know which one one of them is, and that is this trophy for achieving all endings. There is one missable ending, I believe it's ending Y, that is apparently missable, so if you're going for the game legit, make sure you look up how to do that first. The other one, I think the other missable trophy is the one for uh, either like one of these upgrading ones, I think is the other one that is missable because there's like certain items that you can only get in certain places that are super, super rare. So that's my thought on that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure I've read that there are a couple of potentially missable trophies, unless, of course, you choose to use the trophy shop, which I will be doing to buy any trophies that I don't unlock through natural progression. Again, I think this game does it better with the fact that it allows you to purchase the miscellaneous trophies and collectible trophies, but not any of the story-related stuff, except you can actually purchase the trophy for all endings, but you don't get to skip the main endings, which is which I think makes it okay. So that's all good to know that that is an option for this game. And like I said, I'm enjoying the game. I'm legitimately finding this to be a good game. So I would definitely personally recommend it as a game. Now, I mean, it's it's not the longest game, though, if you're just focusing on, like, the main story. If you're just focusing on, like, the main story and all the different, like, the three main endings, it's probably only going to put you back, like, probably 25 hours so it's not the most time-consuming game out there. It's not the longest game out there, which can be good or bad, depending on if you're a trophy hunter or more of a story player. So with that, level 69, 46%, 17,182 total trophies, 403 platinums, 2,297 golds, 4,407 silvers, 10,075 bronzes. So what are the plans for the upcoming week? Well, I had my birthday this past week and I got my new capture card. It's the Game Capture HD 60S and I cannot wait to try it out. I don't I didn't have time to set it up just yet and get everything ready, but I'm going to be testing it out this week and making sure everything works right. So hopefully for the next trophy list update and for any future Platinum Trophy videos after Platinum number 403, anything after that will hopefully be on a new capture card, a new and improved one, as well as future streams, which is all fantastic because this one does not record in the highest quality out there. I mean, it's partially internet and my laptop, not even as much my internet, my internet's actually pretty decent here, but it's more my laptop probably not being the most powerful or best for streaming because I do, I stream on a on a MacBook, which is probably not the best choice for it, but it works well enough for all the other videos and recording and stuff, so it, it gets the job done on everything. At, at the very least, it gets the job done on videos and such, which is good, and for editing and everything, it's perfect for all that. 
I mean, I use Premiere Pro for all that, but yeah. Anyway, so that's the hopeful plan for the future on recording technology. Now, I also actually logged into GTA 5 this past week because they were running another one of those promotions. Just log in and you get a bunch of free money. In this case, a full million dollars, which is kind of awesome. So I'm up to like 2.7 million. So if I get another like 1 to 1.5 million, I would be able to theoretically do the spend 8 million on heist stuff trophy because you can buy it and then sell it back and then rebuy it so that you don't need the full 8 million. But that's just a really stupid trophy that that's a thing. I and mean, that's one of the ones that's definitely geared toward trying to get you to do microtransactions or really overplay the heist. And I mean, I also just checked out the casino as well. That's pretty cool. I mean, to have the casino there and all, that's fine by me. I mean, it's it's okay for the first few times you want to go in and try to win the car on the giant spinning wheel, which I got $50,000 on the most recent time I tried it, which isn't too bad. And then otherwise, I'll just be keep working on Near Automata. Now, this week, though is going to hopefully be, or it's going to basically guarantee to be, the start of a massive PS3 boost for me with Far Cry 2. So me and Snickle are planning on starting up the game on Tuesday or Wednesday. So I don't know what stream schedule is going to look like while we're doing the three-player stuff because that's the more complicated aspect of it. Luckily, it's not a huge part of the game. The three-player stuff is as follows. You need to be the highest revive total in a match. You need to have 500 total revives. Now, one of the guides says you can do both of those trophies with only two people if you have friendly fire on. I don't know exactly how true that is, and I'm not entirely sure it's going to work. But we have a dummy account ready, so even if we can't do it that way, it's fine. You know, it's just... I mean, it's just grindy. I mean, 500 revives actually isn't really that difficult. It's just going to take, you know, a few hours to get it done, most likely. But nothing nothing unreasonable, which is a good thing. The worst trophy of the three-player variety is the field manuals. Because five of the field manuals require you to get multi-kills. And I believe four of them require you to get 100 multi-kills each. And the other one requires, I want to say, maybe 250 multi-kills, which is particularly dumb. So, not looking forward to all of that. But, hey, you know, at least it's going to be easy when boosted. It's just going to be really time-consuming, especially with how bad the servers are. Because you literally have to quit out and reset a match. Like, reset the lobby after every three games or something, or else it'll like not save your progress which is just really really annoying but most of the other stuff can be done with just two consoles like all the regular kills headshots all the other field manual stuff all the match wins downloading and rating maps all that kind of stuff can be done with just two other people of course the other really terrible trophy is well a couple other terrible trophies are leveling up which, thankfully, for the level 30 trophy, you can do the Warlord glitch, which I'm actually intending to maybe do that first or very early. Like, while I have another live human player, we might actually go ahead and get that out of the way early. Because it's technically much faster if you do it right at the beginning of the game. Because you would only have to derank once, which would only require, like, one match. So we're probably going to do that pretty early on, and then, and at the worst, if you lose progress, then you're only going to be set back like 20 minutes or so. So it's not really that big a deal if anything goes wrong there. So we're probably going to, I'm at least going to try to do that pretty early on. He'll probably do it around the same time as me, so that'll at least get that out of the way. And that's, that's one annoying thing out of the way, which is good. So aside from that, though, there's also, of course, the infamous War Party Trophy, which requires a total of 16 people in the lobby. And that is, of course, going to require being in a boosting group, but I think it's going to be manageable. I mean, I've been in big boosting groups before. Uh, we will we'll get it done eventually, uh, probably on PSN profiles. We will find a group to join and get that one done. Thankfully, it's not as bad as some games that have massive trophies like that, where every person needs to individually get the highest score at some point. You only need to have your team win the match, and with eight players on each team, it means you only have to play, if everything works correctly, you're only going to have to play two matches, maybe half an hour if everyone chooses to cooperate, which is not really all that bad, provided, again, everyone shows up and chooses to cooperate. 
So those are the bad trophies in that in that game. So like I said, I'm probably let me know if it sounds like a good idea to go and do the Warlord glitch that early. It's what I'm currently planning on doing, but if people object to it and say it's better to wait or something, that's fine. But I don't really I don't really care as long as I get all that stuff done. I'm gonna be happy because supposedly if as long as you do the Warlord glitch, the rest of the trophies take about 50 hours, which is really not that unreasonable. It's not as bad as I initially thought it was gonna be. And I, I think that's because a lot of the earlier estimates are if you're going to be boosting with another human player, not if you're boosting with yourself on a second console where only one player will need to get everything. Because for the revive, since we're going to have an alternate account in there for that and for the multi-kills, it means only two of us are going to need to get everything done, which is going to cut down on time a lot. And if we only need to boost kills with five weapons plus revives, it's we could potentially get it done like within a week, which is a good thing. So hopefully we can get it done within like a week to two weeks and at least get that part done and then I can focus on all the other two player stuff more at my own leisure. So that's all, that's a good thing, you know, that's, uh, if I can get all that done then I go into the story mode which is much, much more difficult than the other Far Cry games but it'll still be cool to have because I'll have the Far Cry franchise done. I mean, that, that's not one you see every, get done fully every day, you know. And then along interspersed with that, I may also try to start off Resident Evil 5 on PS3. I just need to find another person that has two copies of the game and two PS3s that I can boost it with and work on that as well. So those are the two upcoming main PS3 games I want to boost. And then in the future, I got to go back and do Resident Evil 6, which I don't even think I own the DLC for that. And then a number of other games that I've talked about previously. I also really want to kind of go back and go ahead and do Killzone Shadowfall at some point. Just kind of want to get that one done. Just because it's kind of a time-consuming 100%. It's not overly difficult, but I just, you know, want to go ahead and get that one done. You know, just try to finish everything off with it and have the Killzone franchise pretty close to 100% completion. Especially with the Intercept DLC, you can actually auto-pop everything in the Intercept DLC, which is great. So, as long as you do it in the main game first. So that's all noticeable for the future, all things that I'm hoping to do with games like that. And then, of course, there's Wolfenstein 09 that apparently takes about 15 hours to two, to, uh, two console self-boost. So that one's a little bit lower priority though, just because it's shorter. I could I could theoretically knock that entire thing out in a week if I really wanted to. But with Far Cry 2, once we get the three player stuff done, I'm estimating, you know, if I could work on it for like, you know, two hours a day, have it done within a month or two, which isn't really too bad. And that's not counting even like if I want to dedicate extra time or on the weekends and whatnot. So we will see what happens with all that, though. Otherwise, my only other time-consuming time consuming aspect of my life now is my new job, which has started out quite well, much better than my old job did. I'm liking it a lot more, so that's all a good thing. But that, of course, does take up time during the day because, you know, that adult life kind of sucks at times, but it's just how things go. And otherwise, of course, schedule for upcoming weeks are still hopefully going to be trophy updates on Monday, Platinum Trophy Video Tuesday, stream on Wednesday, uh, Thursday probably open, Friday drunk stream, Saturday uh, probably open, Sunday possibly open. We'll have to see about like trophy list reviews when they start, when more trophy games start coming up, Outer Worlds, Call of Duty, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, now I managed to actually drag this out to over 20 minutes. I'm actually a little bit surprised with how few games I really played. So that is the current update. That is the plan for this upcoming week. Get started on Far Cry 2. Soon enough, get started on Resident Evil 5 PS3. And continue working on Nier Automata. It's a Gamefly game, so I want to get it done. So those are the only games I'm currently sort of planning on focusing on in this upcoming week or so. Maybe I'll do an easy platinum in there. We'll see how I feel about it. And... I guess I'm also kind of waiting on any DLC announcements for Resident, for Resident Evil 2, Red Dead 2, and Fallout 76, but haven't heard anything recently. Although I know that Fallout 76 enters year two, like what, next month? So maybe we'll see a new major expansion that'll make it worth coming back to the game for. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you later this week and next week for more.